Bullfrogs and Lizards is a collection of audio stories about the adventures of a group of children living in an Australian country town in the early 20th century. There are floods, fire, thieving magpies and piglets covered in grease. So if you love great stories, search for Bullfrogs and Lizards on Spotify now. Welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, fun tales to make you laugh and cry with some of the best storytellers from around the world, recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello, how are you? Do you like parties? Do you think your friends would tell you to go home if you turned up to their party in scruffy clothes? No, I don't think they would. The story Tupa's got to tell you today is from Turkey and it's about a man called the Hodja who was sent away from a party all because of his clothes. I wonder what you'd do if that happened to you. You can find out what the Hodja did in just a minute. It's quite silly. I've been having a lovely week looking at all the pictures you sent in. Fox, who is four, drew a genius picture inspired by the parrot's advice. And Poppy and Ellie in Singapore sent two beautiful pictures. Poppy drew the story of Donkey's Band and Ellie, who loves princesses and animals, sent a picture of... Can you guess? Princess Frankie and the Frog. And Alana, who is nine, sent a very stylish story map of Tianjie and the yellow dress. What's so good about you all drawing these pictures is that pictures really help us to remember the stories so that they stay in our heads. I'm hoping that as you draw them, these stories are creeping into your heads so that they become your own and you can tell them too. Lots of you have been posting kind reviews telling us which stories you like. And so many of them are about animals. Edie, who is six, particularly likes the parrot story and the owl girls. Bertie, Raph and Pippa wrote to say that baby crocodile is their favourite. And Gnome, who is five, from Kent, really made my week, writing to say that we helped him feel better when he was poorly. His favourite story is the one with the nose. Well, how the elephant got its trunk. Now, stay tuned all of you animal fans, because next week we're going to start a series about animals. Yippee! Right, now, here's Toop with this week's tale, The Hodger's Party Clothes. Salam Alaikum. Your reply will be alaikum salam. My story I would like to share with you comes all the way from Turkey. But my character is also known in other parts of the world. His name is the Hodja. The Hodja is very famous and known throughout the world. The Hodja is a wise teacher and some call him the wise fool. One day, the Hodja received an invitation to go to a banquet hall dinner, to a party. The Hodja read the information on his invitation and he said, When the day comes, I will go to the banquet hall dinner. He put the invitation on the mantelpiece. The days they passed and the day it came. The Hodger dressed himself in quite respectable clothes. He bound his head with a turban. He combed his long bed and made his way to the banquet hall for the dinner. There before him 
was a large house, grand it was, and standing at the door was the doorman, ushering people in. When the hodger approached the door, the doorman looked him up, looked him down, looked him up, looked him down, then the doorman stopped the hodger and said, Sorry, sir, you cannot come in. Why? said the hodger. I have my invitation. Why can't I come in? The doorman said, Because you, sir, are not properly dressed. What? The hodger couldn't understand. He was dressed. Hey, 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 hey. The hodger wanted to enjoy the banquet hall dinner, so he did not wish to take offence. The hodger turned around. He went back home. He took off the clothes which he was wearing, and he put on a finer garment. He wrapped his hair in a finer material, wrapped it around his head as a turban. He combed his long, wise beard and went to the banquet hall dinner, to the party. As he was approaching the grand house, there before him once again was the doorman. The doorman saw the hodger approaching. The doorman stopped the hodger, looked him up, looked him down, looked him up, looked him down, and said, You, sir, cannot come in. Why, said the hodger, why can't I go in? I have an invitation. I have been invited. And the doorman said once again, Because, sir, you are not properly dressed. What? said the hodger. The hodger was getting angry. He wasn't standing there naked. Can you imagine? He had clothes on, you know. He wasn't standing there in his nappy or something. <laughs> the hodger was getting angry. He turned around and went all the way back home. He took off those fine garments and he put on an even more fine garment. It was threaded with gold, embroidered with silver. It was sparkling with gems and jewels. Once again, he took a piece of material, wrapped it around his head as a turban. He combed his long, wise bed and went to the banquet hall dinner. As he was approaching the large house, there was the doorman once again. The doorman looked him up, the doorman looked him down, the doorman looked him up, and the doorman did a strange thing. He parted the way so that the hodger could enter into the grand house to enjoy the banquet hall feast. The hodger looked at the doorman up, looked at the doorman down, and the hodger continued into the grand hall. When he went into the grand hall, there, just like at dinner time at school, there were people making noises and talking and in conversation and looking for somewhere to sit. The hodger was looking for the place where he should sit. He came to an empty chair. On the table there was a name plaque. The name plaque read Hodger. The Hodger looked at the empty chair, sat down and turned to the guest and said, This is where I should sit. Ah, they said, Welcome, welcome to the banquet hall. Oh, yes, it's going to be a lovely meal. Oh, can you smell the food coming from the kitchen? I cannot wait. And so the guests, they talked this way and that way. What do you think would make a good first course to a five-course meal? What do you think? Could be anything. Let's say it was soup. It was soup. Soup came into the grand hall. And when the soup came into the grand hall, the guests, they said, Oh, I cannot wait. It smells most delicious. It was served before the people. And the people, they picked up their spoons and they started to drink their soup. The hodger looked at his bowl of soup. It looked nice. The hodger looked at the guests, and they were slurping or drinking their soup. The hodger put his hands into his soup. He threw the soup all over his clothes. He threw the soup all over his trousers. He threw the soup all over his turban. Can you imagine? And the guests, they said, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. What is he doing? What is he doing? This man is mad. The man is mad. Look what he is doing. 
He's throwing the soup all over himself and his clothes. Oh, it's disgusting. Who invited such a person to sit at our table? He is embarrassing himself and he's come to embarrass us. The first course was collected and taken away. And the guests, they tried to find something else to talk about. You know, they didn't want to talk about what just happened because it was disgusting. The second course was about to come into the banquet hall. Can you imagine what could be served for the second course? There could be um, rice, chicken, lamb, potatoes, carrots. And for vegetarians, there was sweet potato curry. Whatever you can imagine, it was there. It was served before all the guests. The guests, they said, oh, it looks delicious. Bon appetit, bon appetit. Enjoy your meal, enjoy your meal. Some people eat with knife and fork. That's no problem. Some people eat with chopsticks. That's no problem. Some people eat with their fingers and their hands. That's no problem. The Hodger looked at his plate. He looked at the pasta, he looked at the chips, he looked at the salad, he looked at the lamb, looked very nice, the tagine, all of it was lovely. The Hodger put his hands into his plate and picked up some of the tagine. He opened up his turban and he threw the tagine into the turban. All the gravy and all the carrots started to dribble down his head. Oh my gosh, said the guest. What's he doing? Then the Hodger, he stood up, he loosened his trousers and he took some of the food. Can you imagine? He poured it into his pants. <gasps> All the guests, they said, disgusting, disgusting. Then the Hodger continued to smear himself and his clothes with the food. And the guests, they said, this is most disgusting. Someone must do something. They must go and call the host. We don't want this kind of person sitting at our table doing such a disgusting thing. Call the host. Call the host. Do you know who the host is? The host is the person who has invited everyone to the party. The host came and stood next to the Hodger and asked, Sir, can I see your invitation? The Hodger held up his invitation. The host took the invitation, read the information. The host looked at the name plaque. The name plaque said Hodger. The host looked at the invitation. The invitation said Hodger. And the host said to the Hodger, Sir, I can see you have been invited and you're most welcome to sit and enjoy the banquet hall meal. But you are upsetting my guests. What do you think you are doing? And the Hodger looked at the host and said, Sir, because this is your party, I will explain myself to you. Three times I came to your banquet hall. Three times. The first time I was refused. They said I was not properly dressed. I went home. I, I redressed. I put on fine clothes. I came back again. And your doorman refused me entry again. I went back home. I, I, I changed my clothes. I came again, and for the third and last time, your doorman allowed me to enter. So, says the Hodger to the host, it seems to me that you and your doorman prefer my clothes. So, says the Hodger to the host, it was my clothes that you had invited, and you had not invited me. So, says the Hodger to the host, it is my clothes which will eat your food and I will not. And with that, the Hodger threw the plate of food all over himself and he sat there saying, eat my clothes, eat, for you have been invited. Eat my clothes, eat. For you have been invited. So, I wonder if you understand the meaning 
behind that story. Well, I hope you wouldn't do anything silly at a party. Pouring his dinner into his pants, indeed. Ridiculous. Thanks for listening, and thanks to Toop for that story. A special thanks to our listeners in Atlanta. We really appreciate all your support. If you'd like to support our podcast, then head over to ko-fi.com forward slash stories. And if you have a picture of your favourite story to share then go to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash stories. And every time you put a review on Apple or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts, it helps us to share these stories with people all around the world. Thank you.